Hey traders, welcome. So in this series of videos, we're going to talk about candlestick patterns, Japanese candlestick patterns. I like to use candlesticks. I know a lot of people out there like to use bars, but I think candlesticks are genuinely the most popular. And there's a lots of different kind of patterns that you can get with the Pacific candle, depending on where it is in the trend. And also a cluster of candles together can, can form patterns. Now they've got different labels, but ultimately what I want to do with this video and all the other videos I talk about candlestick patterns is run through the psychology of what it all means. So the first one we're talking about is a hammer. So a hammer generally happens in a downtrend. So the market moves lower here, and then you get this picture here, which is kind of uh, like this. So that can either be, oh, I dropped my green here. That can either be, um, a bullish candle as in a green candle or you can either get it as it's a hammer but it happens to be uh closes lower than the open yeah they're still the same thing but let's talk about exactly what it is and what it means as a trader so the point is with a hammer is that you've got a down move now the hammer, if you think about what this candle is doing, and let's draw it in a big candle here. Let's not worry about filling it in in color, but let's look at it from that perspective. Obviously it's called a hammer because it's like a hammer, there's the handle, there's the hammer head. But what we've got here is either that's the open or the close, depending on whether that's color green or, or, or uh, red. This is the low, this is the high. What is that telling us? Basically, if we've had a downtrend, it's telling us the market has pushed down to this level and intraday, at some point during that trading day, it has reversed and has pushed the highs. So it's opened up near the top kind of quadrant. I guess the textbooks are probably going to tell us that it's a specific percentage that needs to be to be an official hammer. But from an unofficial hammer, or just from a trading perspective, we're trying to make some money out of the market. The point is it's open near the top sort of half or, or quadrant, whatever you like. It's pushed lower, so the continuation of the longer term trend has happened, it's pushed to the downside. It's been rejected at some point in the day, whether that's just purely uh, with no news catalyst, whether that is a news catalyst or something. And then it's come all the way back up and it's closed either above in the case of the green or, or near to, but just still below the open, giving you that classical shape of, hey, this is what happened intraday. We haven't closed down at this level here. The afternoon, we've changed sentiment intraday at the bottom of a trend. That's the key point. There's no point having this in shop if we're chopping around. There's no point looking and say, well, we've got a hammer. It's irrelevant. The point is you want it when you've had the good drive lower, then you see that tail forming or the hammer pattern and then that is a bullish pattern. So you then look to buy that on the close of that hammer. So you buy it uh, here, obviously, if it was if it was green or here, if it was red, uh, whichever it may be. And then you look for a follow through for the next few days. So the po it's, it's supposed to be a reversal pattern of the lows. And it makes sense logically, right? I like to look for this even on a swing trading perspective, on a day trading perspective, it looks good. And for me, uh, which pen shall I use? I've got a handful of pens, guys. I like the longer the tail, the better. You know, obviously, if it's a fat finger scenario and something's happened that's caused that to just spike and it's irrelevant, but if it's been a really monster trend day, let's say you've been trading it down, it's down like 300 points and reverses, comes all the way up, back up and closes up 50 or down 50, you get that massive intraday reversal. That is even more interesting because it's a change in sentiment. And if the change in sentiment happens so quickly, i.e. in the middle of the day, we need to pay attention as traders and say, hey, you know what? Something's happened here. Something has caused everybody to shift their thinking of what's going on. And the position, which is the same with all these kind of patterns and all this kind of thing, the position of it is right at the bottom of a good downtrend. So it would indicate that potentially it is exhaustion. It is the last ditch effort. It hasn't kept, continued lower. It is worth a go. And from a risk quantification perspective as well, guys, we can take the long, you know, at some point here. But you know, from a, we can then say, listen, if it goes below that low, the theory of the hammer, in other words, the intraday change in sentiment is no longer relevant. So I want to be out if we should push below that low. If we don't, I want to stay with it and look for whatever targets you may have. I mean, that's obviously outside of the scope of this is purely an entry tool or an exit tool if you're already short and you say, listen, I'm short. I've now seen a potential reversal with this hammer pattern at the lows. I'm going to cover my short. Obviously, that works as the same as actually going long. 
but you can quantify your risk, you can use it as a good tool. And the nice thing about something like this is that you can scan most of the time uh, with, chart pa uh, with chart packages or even free chart packages for a hammer. And then you can look to see where it is in relation to the overall trend. Look at the volume as well. I like to see how much volume there was with it. If there's decent volume, then that's even more interesting to me because it means there was a big battle going on. There was a lot of people, a lot of supply, a lot of demand, and the demand has outstripped the supply finally and has caused that push up. So those kind of things all put in together. Anyway, that's my take on hammers. How do you use hammers? Do you use hammers? Do you even look at these? Do you call them hammers? Do you call them something different? Love to hear your comments below. If you've got a little twist on them as well that works for you, a little way of uh, you know using the hammer strategy or hammer pattern as a base, but add something to it. I love to hear things like that, stories like that. Anything that makes us better traders, makes us more money in trading. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos on candlestick patterns, technical strategies, discipline, psychology in the upcoming weeks and months from me. Take care, guys.